What it do, what it is, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today, I mean, listen, do I even have to introduce him <laughs> at this point? This is the third time I'm with the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Bravo. What it do, bro? That's love. What it do, man? It's crazy. You you thorough as hell because I ain't never been on the podcast three times. And I don't think I've ever had someone on three times that wasn't a co-host. That's love. So it's only right. I mean, seriously, every time I come to every time I come home to Maryland, DC, whatever the DMV is like, yo, pull up, let's shoot some shit. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no doubt, bro. We're recording live from House of Herbs in DC, Northeast on Georgia Avenue, to be specific. Yes, sir. Um, which is a sponsor of Mark Bravo. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna let you go to give them a quick plug right quick and go in and shout For them out. For sure, man. Shout out the House of Herbs. We're located, like you said, on Georgia Ave. We got the best flower in the city, the best tea in the city. I appreciate them so much for finding Creative House and myself um, finding interest enough to enough to a point where they would sponsor us, man. Yeah. I appreciate the love. They let us use the space. They help us with our events. So much love to them and show them some love for showing me love. Appreciate y'all. Please do because the aesthetics is nice. The space is nice. The environment is nice. It's very professional, mm -hmm. very business-like. I'm really fucking with it heavy. Um, yes, we're here in DC um, off of two weeks removed uh, two weeks removed for breakfast for dinner yes, which was a showcase for plenty of artists in the area and outside of the area people came from like you said TJ we're going to talk to him in a little bit he came from Philly so we had yeah. artists from all over we had artists from nearby um, and then we're also um, just one day removed from Mark your solo uh, show concert yes, um, on your own which was a yes, great turnout <laughs> um, so let's start with the breakfast for dinner first and foremost putting that together you know what I'm saying making that seeing that thing fold out on its own how was that just the experience of seeing everything performing in it and seeing all the mm. other artists that performed in it that's a great question so being in a city where Tiny Desk exists already, this is something that a lot of artists really look up to. Mm. A lot of artists didn't even know. I didn't even know NPR was actually located here. I did not either. Exactly. It's literally located by uh, Union Station, bro. Wow. Literally. It's, wow. it's You'll see the building when you come from the other side. Mm -hmm. So for me finding that out, I decided I wanted to do... Um, a replicate of ode to the DMV and give them an opportunity to experience something with that vibe, but not, mm. you know, exactly a copy of Tiny Desk. Mm -hmm. So we did it. We called it Breakfast for Dinner. It was a dope name um, because Breakfast for Dinner is what you least expect. And Creative House is what the DMV least expects, and they didn't know they needed it till they had it. So um, it's something that we we grew organically. We gave, reached out. Um, we filmed the original video here. Mm -hmm. It got twelve to 13,000 views mm. on Instagram and 800 comments of who should be on breakfast yeah. for dinner. So we had the artists submit. Um, they picked whatever. Once we picked the 15 artists, they picked whatever package they want to go with as far as doing breakfast for dinner, whether they wanted the full experience, whether they wanted just to, just to perform. So we like to give artists those opportunities to pick which level they really want to rock with us on, bro. So, um, yeah, breakfast for dinner. When we got there, um, shout out to Empower to help us with the set. We had, uh, it was like a pot, basically a pan of supposed to be food but there's nothing in it because the artist it represents the artist mm. they're going to be giving us the food in yeah. a sense so then we have flowers and everything we had chef sticks um cooking um breakfast he made some breakfast bowls made some cinnamon toast um cinnamon toast french toast sticks yeah some shit like that yeah, yeah. and it was just fire bro we had different vendors artists got to perform um myself and emmy and ami got to perform shout out to baby arms and ami that's literally I, that we filmed the video together this was we came together to give these artists breakfast for dinner under the name of creative house so shout out to the members specifically ami and empower for helping me bring that to life and mm. it just came out beautiful the videos will be coming out very soon so seeing the performances just just seeing everything lay out all the mm -hmm. performances, the different aesthetics, if you would, from the artists, because uh -huh. no artist was the same. You they had so many different elements that came from artists that brought such a great vibe, brought such a great taste of music. Just seeing all that and seeing everything went or go how it went. Right. What was that like living in the moment of it actually happening? Man, so for those who know me, when I throw things... I'm all over the place mm. when I'm throwing them. However, the ones I really got to tap into um, was Jayla's. I saw her from a distance. J-Dubs. LaRoche was probably one of my favorites. I told him that he was fire. Um, TJ Foreplay is always dope. It was really like, so a lot of artists have an experience like an industry level 
um, event at an industry pace. Right. So when we were when when they get there late, Emmy's pressing you out at the door like they mm. would at any set. Yeah. Emmy's pressing you out while you're there late. If you're there early, she brought you in the room. She gave everyone a speech. Let them know exactly what this is. If it's your time to go up, you better be there, or we're gonna skip you and you're gonna have to go last. Like mm. it was it was really cool to see the artists uncomfortable with yeah. that at first, and then grow comfort into it. Because at first they probably didn't know how to feel about Empower, but by right. the end of it they're like, okay, she's supporting us. She loves us. She's telling us what these other venues and the DMV aren't letting us know yeah. and they just kind of coddling us where she's like now nah, if you want to get to this level this is what it takes and this is how we got to where we are and let's 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 start there by saying shout out to Emmy yes I mean seriously be, being a part of that foundation of that whole event on its own mm -hmm. I mean shit even with this setting shit up you know what I'm exactly. saying letting us know when the time is you know what I'm saying the time exactly, to wrap up bro. and whatnot for sure um shout out to Emmy yes seriously. for real um and I like that you said that because Kind of, you, you're kind of introducing them. You're getting them to put a foot in the door of that professional mm -hmm. industry establishment. And that's very important because I'm not going to say no names, but I recently saw a clip of an artist who was put on a stage of a very broad um, um, concert festival, mm -hmm. actually. And their performance, they're, they're new. They're up and coming right. artists. They're okay. new. They kind of just blew. And their performance, you can tell that was their first time stepping foot in that type of atmosphere. Okay. And it was throwing off. You can see right. them being uncomfortable. You yep. see them not knowing how to project their voice properly on the yeah, microphone, exactly. how to kind of, you know, control the stage and control mm -hmm. the crowd. You can see all that. Right. Yep. So it's it's very important. And shout out to you for even doing that, for kind of even introducing them to that. Yeah, because, bro, no problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. People say they want it. And then people, like I've talked to you before about what the industry needs. And people look at Atlanta, people look at LA, and people look but like this is the type of stuff where it starts bro yeah that we if people want industry we bring industry to them especially mm -hmm. if you got the knowledge right. so you know now that we have the knowledge and resources we just gonna keep giving to the dmv man got to yes, got sir. to uh -huh. shout out to that man um okay so boom breakfast for dinner was a fucking hit success 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 mm -hmm. yet another hit another successful event was your show that happened last night Let's go in and talk about that. Just talk about lead. Let's let's talk about leading up to it. <laughs> Fuck being in the actual moment. We're gonna get to that. We're gonna get oh, to the man. actual moment. Let's talk about behind the scenes what goes into this type of shit. Hell yeah. Because it's not just you wake up, roll over in bed, and get it, you can get it popping and make it happen. Oh, what man. goes, what went into this? Man. Whew, I'm glad you asked that, bro. Cause a lot of people really only see like the finished result mm -hmm. or everything, bro. Absolutely. But like this show is supposed to happen May 25th. Mm. I believe originally it was supposed to happen in May. No, it was like May 4th and it just didn't, um, it ended up getting pushed back or something with pie shop happened. I don't know. But like originally it was me. Um, and this exclusive, I'll give it to you on here, but like this is who we had planned. It was supposed to be me, Foggy Raw, Primo Rice, Uncle John, a um, couple other artists around that time. So then things changed by the time we actually got the official date for Pie Shop. So I was rehearsing and everything yeah. in April for this show. Right. And it, it didn't happen until now. So now um, I ended up locking in the date around my birthday, around July with Brady. And he said, cool, we on for 925 at Pie Shop. And I'm like, mm. bet, let's run it. And um, so I reached out to a few artists. Um, even Trilla K was originally on this lineup too. So y'all, all these artists I'm naming, I'm eventually work with. Um, it just This just wasn't the time. But we ended up... Um, I found the perfect people along the time that were really supposed to be there that night. Yeah. One, Neptune, because Neptune performed in Shea Butter Show. Mm. Neptune is an amazing soul. People say that they, they remind, she's like the female version in a sense of like the aesthetic that I bring to, to the DMV. So Neptune was dope. I met really real on tour with Creative House. We performed in the New York subway station. Yeah. So really real ended up knowing Odd Mojo. And they hung out. Our mojo, I've been trying to reach, like, literally, I posted, like, two years ago on New Year is who I wanted to work with in, like, 2020. And Odd Mojo's name was there. Yeah. Uncle John's name was there. So it's like, this was my first time working with Odd Mojo. And I really was so happy that I could have her there. And then Sweezo. Um, Sweezo, he's just a hit maker, bro. And I met him this summer and told him, you have the best hits in the DMV for mm. sure, bro. So like, and me and me and Nature Boy, we kind of got into it with the, about the show with Sweezo and um and AMG, but we all ended up working it out. And I, I love those type of moments, bro, because it just brings us closer. And we just had a, a way better show. So shout out to everybody that was on the lineup. Ami was on the lineup. Coyote, um, Ron Rich. Shout out to him and his family. And um, lastly can't name who the last one was because he didn't pull up so that was kind of yeah. weird but you know it's all good but yeah show was beautiful man so that was kind of leading up to it we had rehearsals in my backyard 
Um, mm. I asked people who wanted to really be in my set that was in Creative House and helped me out. And shout out to O'Dog. He was on stage doing backflips. I don't know if you've seen that clip. I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. O'Dog was on stage <laughs> doing backflips. Shout I out have. to, yeah. to O'Dog, man. So I wanted to really like put together a play and a scene yeah. with scenes and acts in my show. But not so much where we're acting out stuff, but more of like I wanted to visually represent the photo shoots I post on my page and put soundtracks to them. Mm on stage in a yeah. visual live action moment so like it was so dope to be able to recreate some of those picture scenes in performance version yeah. i don't think i've seen anyone do that shit before that's hard i mean it, it, we're going to get to us a lot of stuff that you're doing i had a lot of people haven't done or hasn't been seen uh mm -hmm. being done before mm -hmm. um real quick on something you said uh -huh. just as in you had the show planned originally in the past um and it didn't go as planned right and we kind of spoke on this earlier just how being part of being a professional is realizing that more times than not something's not going to go as planned mm -hmm. and yep. it's all about how you adapt and maneuver and learn from and move around it right, right? every time right every time even today y'all <laughs> shout out to jayla <laughs> <laughs> for sure we're gonna get her right yeah, though yeah, that's yeah, a part yeah, of yeah. it man yeah. so every time what's up damo yeah i'm good but yeah man and, and she'll and she'll she'll learn as it goes with it, right? Exactly. Like, she'll get it too. Yeah, yeah. She'll know this ain't going to be the first or last time. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yep, exactly. And that's what happens, bro. And it's really on us to reroute, like you said. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. So yeah, I with my with my label. I was a little upset that it wasn't going to be on that date, but once we got the new date, cool, let's run it, bro. I'm yeah. ready whenever. Do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. So in the actual moment of you yourself performing, I mean, just being here alone within the past hour, so so many compliments have been flooded your way towards people in person just saying how you shut it down. I mean, I've seen the clips. I wasn't there in person. I was, you know, visiting family and whatnot, but just just seeing the clips from you, um, you know what I'm saying, performing, the pictures and whatnot, I mean, yo, just in, self, just in itself, you call yourself the wavy one. You are the epitome of a wavy motherfucker. Let me Thank say that you, first and foremost. Because I've never <laughs> seen someone, and people are going to take this and run with it, I guarantee it. I've never seen someone just with the stage elegance that you have, mm. as far as just the way that you groove. You was in the subway on the roller, uh, not the roller blades, but the roller skates, mm -hmm. grooving on mm -hmm. the mic. You was performing, getting your head done by Roddy. Shout out to Roddy. Shout out to Roddy. Shout out to you, baby. For real. And just all of that shit, right? It was just, it's just something that I've never seen before, but mm. it's such... It fits you perfectly because I see you. you as a groovy person and that's just a groovy aesthetic. So just all of that happening and whatnot. First and foremost, how do you plan for stuff like that? Like, do you go into it saying, I want something that no one has seen before? Or is it just naturally you and it just happens to be something right. that no one's seen? Exactly. Because yeah. I am what no one's seen before. Mm. So any idea Fucking I have it. is just, um, that's the aesthetic that's coming with it. Bro. That's it. Like, I don't really try to, I used to, when I was younger, I would try to be different. But now right. I just try to be the best version of me, yeah. which is different because there's only one me. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yep. So you actually performing. I mean, what, what was that like? Man, I don't know. It's mm. like I don't be there. Yeah. It's like a different ver like that's when East Side Wavy, that's kind of why I came up with that uh alter ego because mm. that's who I am when I perform. That's who takes Wavy. over. Yeah. So it's like I I really have to now go back. Like someone showed me a clip of me performing after and I'm reacting to it like it ain't me. I'm uh, like, "What, bro? That's yeah. cool, bro." Yeah. It's just like I really be surprising myself cuz a lot of this stuff isn't my idea. It's not like my my doing. I really don't really take credit for a lot. I literally listen to the universe and God about whatever idea comes to mind what i feel like it is is like all right cool that's what i have to do yeah this is just what it is just meant so all right buddy so yeah it was just meant so it's like just being up there bro i felt like i just i belonged yesterday people this is my first show where people coming out to see me mm -hmm. not not i'm not opening for nobody like right. in a sense like this was the head, i was the headline so yeah. it was just like man to have that crowd just be there for me to really be able to practice crowd control for the first time where i can have the crowd get loud get mm. quiet left side right side versus yeah. each other like that's the type of stuff i was able to implement for the first time and i use these performances as practice for me to just go even harder next yeah. time by the end of the set i had my whole vision for the next show mm. of what my next set is going to be because it's only building up yep and I'm, I'm i'm noticing the high moments the low moments and i just like bro my mind is like a machine it's insane bro so it was just love to be up on stage yesterday and just have all those faces in the crowd there for me and just showing me love and all my open and acts love too it was just a beautiful moment Love to see it. You love yes, to hear sir. it, man. Yes, so sir. was that promo for anything? Is anything sneaky coming down, uh, <laughs> you know, down the path? Eastside Wavy, October 11th. There we go. The single. Mm. The single. We got a lot of 
dope promotions. Y'all know how I do though, man. Yeah. Y'all know how I do. So we got uh, we got some dope promotions coming with that. Stay tuned. Uh, bigger and better things coming, man. That's that's the that's the wave, man. That's what comes with it. It never stops. It never stops. And you stick at it. And 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 you're in so many different avenues, man. You're truly inspirational. You got your own fucking rolling papers. Oh, those are out too. And that's a part of the promotion for the East Side Wavy. So pink rolling papers, y'all can catch them in House of Herbs. This will be the actual first store location that we're starting in. And it's just gonna you'll see them in a the neighborhood near you soon at your neighborhood store. If y'all didn't catch the very first interview that me and Mark did, I labeled him the Diddy of the DMV, and now you fucking see why. <laughs> I mean, he never stops. True. I mean, you said it early too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. seriously, man, you Before never stop. You're constantly grinding. You got so many different things going on. I mean, an entrepreneur. You got your own rolling papers. You have your own dice. You know what I'm saying? You got just so many things going on. Yeah, you never it. stop. But then the most important thing is you're putting other people on. Mm -hmm. All these people you're putting on. TJ from Philly. You know what I'm saying? Saying yes, that he, he ran into you and that's why he's making moves out here. That's why yes, he's sir. branching out into the DMV music scene just off the strength of you, mm -hmm. right? That that's love, bro. That don't get overlooked, man. Keep that's it going. That's love. I appreciate it, man, for real. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh, no doubt, man. Yes, sir. So we ready to get out of here, man. Hell yeah. Before we do, let them know where they can find you yet again. Mark Bravo, M-A-R-C, Bravo, or anything, Google, YouTube, Spinrilla, whatever you got, Mark yeah. Bravo, man. Peace and love. Thank y'all for all the support. Keep watching my journey if you want to see where I go. Straight like that. So we ready to get into it with these uh, other artists that performed at the Breakfast for Dinner. Um, so you make sure that y'all stay tuned. Let's get it. Stay tuned, man. Performance is coming soon. Let's get it. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, our first artist of the day is the one and only Go Hard Mike Lee, what it do, bro? Roll it. Whole lot of pox shit. Go Hard Mike Lee up in the spot. You know what it is. I like the vibes off rip. Exactly. Let me ask you something. On your IG, an alias of yours, Aquaman, do you go by that? <laughs> <laughs> you jumped right into that question. Absolutely. That was the first question. Absolutely. Uh, I do. I do. Where did that come from? My girl. Okay. Yeah. Surfboard. You, surfboard. Yeah. Aquaman. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I like it. So... <laughs> I, I mean, if you don't, if you don't get it, then you then ain't supposed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if they don't pick that up, it ain't meant for them to pick that up. For sure, for sure. All right, so let's get straight into it, man. Earlier we was talk, we was bumping at that uh, that good Larry. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying that good job, Larry. And we was talking about the waves and the vibe that he brought into the game and whatnot. So I want to ask you off rip your vibe. If you had to put any type of label on it to a certain degree, because no one can put a full label on their creativity. But if you could put some type of label on the wave or the bribe, the vibe that you bring to the game and to your fans, what would it be? Coming straight from the horse's mouth. Progression music. Mm. Yeah. So I want people like, my vibe is progression. Wherever you was at yesterday, wherever you was at last year, like being better than that. Absolutely. So um, I would say that's my vibe. Um, I've always got that I like, I, I pick good production and stuff like that. So I'm always trying to, pick better production. Um, lately, I've been trying to, well, what I've been doing is fine tuning what I make with the producers that I make music with. Um, I definitely enjoy going on YouTube and grabbing whatever's fire, mm -hmm. but I, I understand that it's really important to link in, lock in with producers that they're hearing your sound, mm -hmm. they're hearing the growth mm -hmm. in your sound, and they like, if they're a good producer, producer. If they're yeah. a good producer, they're gonna be like, we was on this last time. Mm -hmm. Let's take that to another level, or like, let's fine tune this hi-hat. Let's, let's make sure them drums is hitting even harder. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, progression music, most definitely. And I like that you somewhat put quotations on producer. Mm -hmm. And I ask that because, you know, a question nowadays where all these producers coming around, the number one question that I seem to see pop up is, are you a producer or a beat maker? Yeah. So you looking for someone who's going to produce and really lay that shit down and fine tune everything rather than, hey, here's a beat. I'm going to go ahead and hop on it. Right. So it's And a, I appreciate both. Of course. You know what I'm saying? Because I love the fact that you literally go on YouTube and you can type in whatever you want. Mm. You know, Key Glock sound and beat. Mark Bravo sound and beat. Yeah. Go Hard Mike Lee sound and beat. They're yeah. going to get you out the way. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate that. But I also know that, it's, that there's a difference. I was having a... 
not argument, but like my man, he not really in the music industry. Mm -hmm. So he was like trying to tell me that Diddy not a producer. Mm. And I'm like, bro, you got to stop it. Mm. I don't care if he not hitting the the NPC or whatever. Right. Like you, he picked Juicy Sample, bro. Mm. He picked Juicy Sample. I mean, he's had great sounds. Yeah. Like Bad Boys yeah. gonna produce some great and, hits. And, and my bro, he had good facts. I'm not going to uh -huh. fake. Because he uh -huh. brought out, well, I heard Stevie J was making a lot of the beats. That's cool. Who went and got Stevie J? Mm. Who told Stevie J, play that there right here? No, not that chord. Play that chord here. Mm -hmm. Move that there. Yeah. Stevie J not doing that. If he was, who did? Why, why Jocelyn ain't got no hits? Because mm. it's just Stevie J. And it's, it's crazy you said that because people fail to realize that it's a lot of parts on a song. Yep. Excuse me, you may have more than one producer. You may have songwriter. It's so many parts rather than just one person saying that, okay, I produce all, be all. Post-production. Mm. Folks come in, post-production, a beat is hard, and then somebody come in and add some 808s or take away something during a drop, and you mm. like, oh, my God. People don't, most of Drake's songs, even if he a feature, somebody then came in, took something out mm -hmm. so that his voice can propel mm -hmm. more than when that other rapper was rapping. That other rapper was competing with drums. Yeah. Compete. Somebody, come, 40 come in and be like, man, take all that out, man. Go ahead, get your mm -hmm. thing off. And mm -hmm. it that's why our best producer, I mean, our best rappers, nine times out of 10, they got a producer that they rocking with heavy. That's oh, yeah. building they sound. Oh yeah. yeah so. I mean, case in point, you said Drake and 40. 40 goes crazy, very underrated and slept on. Yeah. Very. Okay, you know your things about, you know your, you know your stuff about producers and whatnot. Let me ask you, mm -hmm. on the mainstream level, um, who would you say is a producer that you admire the most today? Mainstream level, a mm -hmm. producer that I admire today. That you, you think they, they got the most top notch shit today? Mm. Do you consider Alchemist mainstream? Yeah. Well, I mean mainstream as in like yeah. You they, know they've they've worked at a certain level. I don't mean mainstream as in they're only on the radio because oh, okay. Alchemist is easily top fucking three right. in my books. Bro. Okay, Alchemist got you. is insane. Got yes. you. And and I say Alchemist because it's like he he know who he sound good with. He know mm -hmm. who he can make sound good. Mm -hmm. And also, Covert Coop is just a classic. I'm sorry. Mm. Like, so um, I would say Alchemist. Um, I also would say Hit Boy. Mm. Hit Boy. There you go. I like Hit Boy. So who are some producers that you work with mm -hmm. that you just, like, you can't go forward without them in your pocket producing your beats? Um, I would say my man KB. He out of Murder Club. Um. He uh KB Wolf Zenzo Rare. Um he his, he got like this um that's my boy. Shout out KB man, shout out Wolf Zenzo. Um yeah, man, shout out Murder Club, man. KB got this thing that I can't even tell you, man. You gotta listen to his mm. beats. I was gonna tell you what yeah. I like the most yeah. about the beats are hard. Um, I got a song out right now called Billions. Um, and he did that beat. Um Billions is all on all streaming platforms right now. Go stream that. Um, but uh, yeah, so Wolf Zenzo, um, my man Gabe, that guy, Gabe got beats. He's um he's in Cali now. Mm -hmm. Um, dope producer. Um, I'm working with Smokey Garvin now. Um, he's definitely hot in the city. One of the big dogs in the city. He a videographer too. Mm. Check in with him. Uh, Twenty four frames per second hand. Second hand mm -hmm. cinematics production. Um, so definitely check in with Smokey um, and sec second hand cinematics and second hand production. Um, I love his beats. He really gives you that, um, like kind of like that Larry June feel. Mm. Um, he got he got a project out right now that I, he I'm pretty sure he produced the whole thing. Um, and he really give you that Larry June currency feel. It's real smooth. Yeah, that vibe shit. Yeah. So let me ask you, when you look for a producer yourself personally, are you looking for more so a producer who makes great hits on a broad scale that anybody can pick up and fuck with? Or are you mm -hmm. looking for someone who taps into a specific type vibe that you look for yourself? Which one's more important? I'm going to be honest with you. This is my process. Mm -hmm. So... My, I got like three or four producers, so I know what they do, mm -hmm. um, and I love what they do. So that's like my sound. 
Um, but I like I don't have a Caribbean producer right now. So mm -hmm. like you still gotta do the work as an artist, like, yeah. you know, looking for different producers online. When you grab that YouTube beat that was fire, like actually going to their beat page and seeing like what else they have. Um, because most of them, like, once you tap in, they just gonna keep sending you packs. Right. So I kind of split it up where like my sound it are the three or four producers that I work with exclusively right now. And then like when I'm like, man, like, cause I'm going to be honest with you. Like I hear songs and get inspired. Like I'm not one of those people that's like, Oh nah, like this weird thing happens. And I no, like yeah. I hear music. Yeah. I listen to music all day. I hear something, I get inspired. If I'm like, I want a Caribbean beat, then I'm going to go look for Caribbean beats. And then I'm going to find the producer that's really making a lot of those beats. Right. Um, so that's my process, you know. That's nice. how I do it. So where your your vibe, your just your style, I should say in general, um, and just where you are now with your music career, how did how did it get started? Where did it come from, and what inspires it then and today? Uh, what inspired me to get into music is I was good at it. Um, I excelled. As far as what rapping or just overall instruments? Yeah, rapping. Okay. I know. Uh, I think I, I play like the clarinet in like fifth grade or sixth grade, and then they started charging. My mother was like, "Oh yeah, well, free it. basketball." Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, no, it was rapping. Like I just was like, you know, be on the bus, and I could like I would remember all of the words to people's songs that I like. So it started there. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, hey, hey, rap that dragon verse, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm showing my age, but anyway, yeah. rap that verse, bro. Like, rap that verse. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so we just gonna skate over. It's all good. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like rap that verse, da da da, da mm -hmm. like a fast verse, a slow, whatever. So I would be really good at that, and then, um, I wanted to be in a group. I like mm -hmm. had moved. I mm -hmm. moved. And I, I was, you know, trying to make friends people that was around me was making music. I was like, I like making, I, I want to yeah. try and make music, bro. Right. I like Fruity Loops and shit. Yeah. Like, let's see what happened. Um, so we started that um, and I excelled. I didn't even want to be like a solo artist or anything. I just wanted to be a guy that was like good, that was good. And you know, y'all go be the stars, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever. Um, but then I just got better and better. Yeah. Um, and then I, when people would like tell me like, yo, you wrote that? Like you mm -hmm. did that? That's you? Right. I like that. Um, and then once I started performing, it was a rap. Mm. Like once I got on stage and once I like, what's that feeling like? Um, it's like, I would imagine it's like, you know, uh, a basketball player running out mm. for the starting lineup, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or hitting a three or a football player scoring a touchdown. It feel yeah. like everything I'm working for is right here mm. and it feel good yeah. type shit. Out, so. of body, out, of, out of body experience, I can imagine. Yeah, that too. That yeah. I honestly like, bro, cause I, Art All Night was this um, weekend, like I've been performing all like the every day, like the last three, four days. And mm. like, I'm like on a high, yeah. like I'm tired, but cause I work too, but. But you're, you're yeah, driven. Yeah, you're like driven. I'm about to go to open gym yeah. after this. Yeah, so, I get it. you know, um, yeah, out of body experience. I'd be looking at some of my footage after I perform, and I'm like, damn, like, yeah, I didn't even realize I did that, right? Like, you know, so yeah. yeah, that's what's up, man. Um, before we get out of here, I gotta ask, what's to come? Go hard, Mike Lee music. What we, what we got cooking up, baby? Yeah, what we got? yeah. So, like I said, Billions is out right now. Um, that's streaming on all platforms. That's produced by Wolf Zenzo. I got another song that I'm about to drop. Um called Box Office, so that'll be out soon. I'm gonna be dropping a lot of um, singles uh, probably until the year is out. Um, and I wanna, you know, give folks a little, a, a lengthier, um, like a lengthier body of music mm -hmm. when like at the end of the year. Yeah. Just to have some some people could listen to over Christmas break and go right. into the new year with and stuff like that. So probably drop an EP at the end of the year, but I'm gonna just be dropping singles um and performing around the city from now until like the end of the year it's a good plan it's a good time to do it where can people find you you can find me on instagram go hard mike lee music you can find me on twitter go hard mike lee everything is pretty much go hard mike lee except instagram we go hard mike lee music um i got the i'm smoking remix out right now with the city zone big o he killing shit right now so definitely tap in with big o i'm smoking is produced by my producer i was telling you about gave that guy gave got beats um and yeah man just run them streams up go on youtube check me out I'm everywhere for real, man. I like the head. Keep cooking up and keep going hard. For Go sure. Hard, Mike Lee. For sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. So 
We are live in the place. We are joined by the one and only TJ Foreplay. Yes, what up, bro? Yes, TJ Foreplay. My name's a joke. I'm not. What's going on? I like it. First and foremost, I like it. What's going on with you, man? You you out here. We in DC. Yeah. You came out here from Philly, you know what I'm saying, to shoot this good content. Yes, sir, man. I'm oh. excited too. Yeah. Excited as shit for this. So are you originally from Philly? No, I am originally from Baltimore. Mm. Uh, and I moved up to Pennsylvania after college. Went to school up there and just stayed up there, you know what I mean? So what school did you go to? I went to Widener. Okay. It's in uh, Chester, if you're familiar with that. It might not be. It's a small school. Y'all D3. colors are blue and yellow. Yes. My friend played yes. football at Widener. Where, when? Shout out to Sharp. He went there from 2013 to like 2016 to I 2017. might know him. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I was there from 14 to 18. So okay. I, I might, yeah. No, oh. My freshman year was the only year that football team was good, so he yeah. was on it then. Yeah, I think he, he has a ring. Yep. So, that been yeah, year. okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, 13, actually. I'm sorry. That's okay. what I That's yeah, what's up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you're one of a few select artists from outside of the DMV that mm. performed in the Breakfast for Dinner yes, sir. Uh, live performance. First and foremost, what was that What was that like? Uh, well, first of all, it was an honor to even be a part of it. Mm. I mean, to be selected. I think over 200 people applied for that and yeah. 15 got selected. So, shout out to Creative House. Shout out to Mark Bravo and the whole team for mm -hmm. one to just give me the opportunity. And I'm the type of person... I go to a place, you know, I'm trying to learn. Mm -hmm. So seeing all these talented artists, the vibe was amazing just from the word go. Yeah. The band was professional. Mm. I mean, they had everything done within a second. They would listen to your music for like five, ten seconds and be able to pick up on it right away. Really? And it played amazing. Wow. So um, I had a great set. I think I think it was a great performance. I yeah. think everybody did a great job, man. And it was just so much fun to network. Yeah. I mean, that's what you're there for, really. Of course. It's the network. Course. Get your music out. Let people yeah. know, hey, I'm trying to work with you. I'm trying yeah. to work with you, you know. Make connections, build. So one thing I admire about your style, being someone who's in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. is you don't have the normal Philly rap music sound. Right. Which is always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Being yeah. different is, is always better, um, if you ask me. Um, so like you being out there, you knowing how the Philly vibe is, and you coming out here to DC and the DMV, picking up the vibe from the breakfast for uh, dinner, like how do you compare and contrast the different vibes from Philly to Maryland to your own? It's a good question. In Philly, I would say it's um, it's a lot of that Meek Mill style mm. where everybody has bars, but everybody's trying to yell them. Okay. Like it's it's sometimes you got to give a you know a little bit of a volume takedown. Okay. You know what I mean. Uh, Maryland is an interesting mix because you get some of that Virginia style and then you get that New York style that, that bleeds down as well. Mm -hmm. And then the Baltimore club music. Mm -hmm. So it's a good mix. But here, man, DMV, of all the places I've been, this has been the most versatile and been the most diverse amount of talent that I've mm -hmm. seen so far. Yeah. Um, and I want to go back to what you said about the sound thing. Mm -hmm. That was the whole reason why I do this. Like, as soon as I heard myself record the first time, I'm like, oh, this is different. Mm. My voice don't sound like anything I've heard before. Mm. I mean, I've been compared to a West Coast style, but I, I really think it is more uh, like a conglomeration of native tongues. Native tongues. Yeah. Let's, let's dig deeper into that. Elaborate. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by your style is more so native, native tongues? Tongue. What does that mean? So that was a, a collective from the late 80s, early 90s. That was a Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul. Mm. Um, the Roots, mm -hmm. Rested Development. Common, um, Most Def, yep, Gangstar. A lot of them, yeah. yeah. Jungle uh, Jungle Brothers. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of Queen Latifah, Money Love. I mean, it keeps yeah. going. Basically, like anybody that had anything to say right. that, you know, at that time. And then the music was also dope as shit. Yeah. So it's a, it's both. You know, and we always have to have something to move to that moves you, whether it's mentally, physically. But at the same time, I'm the person. I want to put some lyrics and put depth in there as well. Yeah. So you, you naming the crews that you named earlier, Tribe, mm -hmm. De La Soul, um, Common, Mos Def, uh, Native Tongues, learn something new every day. That, that's what you said? Yeah, that's called? the name Native of the group, Native Tongues. Yeah. Um, did that inspire you coming up when you was listening to music and really soaking oh, yeah. everything in like Big a sponge? Time. It okay. was that. And then, of course, Biggie, Big L, Tupac, mm. um, Big Pun, anybody that could spit. You know, okay, like, so it like, sounds yeah, like It's you, a little bit of both. It sounds like you gravitated towards lyricists. Yes. Oh, heavily. Yeah. Heavily and, towards and, lyricism. And I say that because nowadays we're kind of digressing from the lyrical part of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why I think that um, what I'm doing right now is is working so well. Mm. Because people are, I think, afraid to do it or yeah. don't want to anymore. Yeah. Uh, no, that's perfect. You know they're either mean? afraid or don't want to. I think it's more so afraid. Yeah. I think they're more so afraid because it's not the norm. Right? When people talk about old school rappers from the 90s that were lyricists, people nowadays be like, yeah, but I mean, was that shit? Nas, perfect fucking example, right? 
a lot of people try to downplay Nas because his beats didn't make you want to dance or his beats right. weren't club bangers. No, he was just telling stories. He was telling. <laughs> that's, that's what I, he was doing. I th- I'm putting he him was, top three yeah. telly, uh, storytellers oh, with easily. Slick Rick and Big. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite story song from Nas? Let's test you out a little bit. Mm, mm, that's a good question, man. Um, see, I really like Halftime. That's a that's a great one. Um, again, the message, of course, is, mm-hmm. is a brilliant song. Mm-hmm. If I ruled the world. But um, if I had to go with one, uh, I'm I'm seeing the music video, and for some reason I can't think of the damn name of it. But he's talking to his homie that's in jail. Telling him that you know he's he's got everything locked down on the outside. This, one love. Yes, thank you. One, one love. love. Q-tip. Yes. One love. one love. Have you ever seen Belly, the movie Belly? You know that scene where he was talking to the kid on the bench is right. the last scene from One Love. Yeah. Wow. Remember no, he was, he I was talking I about. I just he, he was just saying, made that happen yeah, for me, man. Yeah. No, I yeah. Did not know yeah. That. If if you don't know now you know wow. the last scene wow. of One Love was the little kid uh, was the last scene in Belly when he was talking to that little kid. That's tough. Me personally, my favorite song or story song from Nas, Rewind might be one of the most talented story songs because he said it in reverse. But me personally, <laughs> I like the setup with, uh, who was it, Prodigy? I think uh, it was. Yeah, from Mob Deep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Mob Deep. Yeah, yeah. Prodigy. Yeah. I, I like- um, That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I, I like one. the setup. And then I think Rewind is right there behind it. Um, but that's what's up, man. So- Again, man, shout out to you. You're reaching out. You're coming out here. You're seeing different things and whatnot. So the performance, mm-hmm. the actual performance at the breakfast for dinner, you being on the stage, you being in front of a new crowd in a new city, yep. laying out your shit that was different. What was that feeling like? Uh, every every chance I get to perform somewhere the first time is my favorite experience mm-hmm. because I've I've come to like accept the fact that I know what people are presuming about me when I go up on stage versus how I sound afterwards. Mm. So it's like, oh, what's he gonna do? Yeah, like he he's got to have some lyrics because he looked like that. He's not gonna be talking about you know getting his dick sucked or yeah. anything like that. Yeah. He's gonna have to have some lyrics. Did you talk about that? No. Oh, okay. Oh, well, you're so saying you're saying name, that's what they expect? Yeah, the expectation. Because okay. the name is TJ Foreplay, so Good. it's like, oh, he must be talking about you know this, yeah. that, and the other, but it's yeah. not. It's yeah. all a misdirection. Like, yeah. I want people to just be shocked by yeah. me. That, yeah. That's what I provide a shock value. So like it's that. amazing. Like, I know going up there now, I'm going to blow people's heads off. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the confidence that I have in myself. Mm. And, and, you know, you have to have that as an artist. You have to truly believe that you're the best mm-hmm. and work like it. Because otherwise, be. you aren't going to go anywhere. And, and I'm glad you said that because there's a fine line between humility, humility and feeling like you're the shit you got to at some yeah, point. Like, everyone wants between. to be humble. Everyone wants yeah. to be nice and whatnot. And no, we're all winners. Yeah, but I'm going to be the best fucking winner there is. Right. And if it's right. someone that's better than me, okay, so be it. But I will never think that because I'm already setting myself behind. Right. And that's what you go into whenever you perform and whatnot. So you, that shock factor, which I like because that sticks mm-hmm. with people. Right. I'd rather, so you'd rather someone who doesn't expect what you're about to put out, oh, yeah. get put out rather than they expect something and then you give it to them and it's cool, it's good, it's what they're used to. Right. So do you see and do you feel that shock factor vibe? From the crowd when you perform? I do. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, people will come up to me after the show and they'd be like, yo, I, like say the exact words. I did not expect that from you. Mm. And I usually will be like, you know, I appreciate that. Like, I, I get that. Yeah. First time I heard myself, I was shocked too. Mm. So it's one of those things where the voice is so much higher than what I'm talking at right now. Mm-hmm. And then the cadence and the flow is old school. So it's like refreshing for people. So I think that helps with um, my bass because I can speak to people my age. I can speak to people generation before me because I'm speaking real hip hop. How old are you? 26. Okay. Yeah, so I look a lot younger than I actually am. No, nah, I'd, I'd give you 26. So you're yeah, right in thank that. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're right in that <laughs> fine line of you understand the old school 90s hip hop. Yeah. You understand the early 2000s. You lived in it. You know about the greatness that came from the early 2010s mm-hmm. to where we're at now. Yeah. You can put all that shit together, which is very important for any music artist, I always say. You have to be uh, able to evolve. Mm-hmm. Like that's crucial. You, yeah. The way you sound now, the way I sounded last year versus now, I sound like a totally more mature, more veteran, like knows what he's doing now. Yeah. And then next year, I hope to say the same thing, that yeah. where I sound now compared to then is world different. Gotcha. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about, man. So let me ask you, mm-hmm. what's to come? Well, I would say what's to come for me is to continue to work on putting out content, continue to make singles, continue to work on albums, EPs, all that, collaborate with people. My, my thing is I want to, work to get to different cities so like i personally feel like i've done a lot in philadelphia done a lot in south jersey trying to make some moves down here in the dmv new york 
Atlanta, Memphis, all those places are like what's on my to do list for the next year or two. Um, I moved to Charlotte not too long ago to expand. Mm. I have bought a SUV for loading my equipment and hitting up different Word. cities for that exact reason. You can't sit still. Mm -hmm. You can't. It don't matter how fucking good you are. You have to. Yeah, expand. it's always somebody better, man. Especially if you're sitting there. Someone's yeah, working. You have to. Someone's working. You have to. TJ for a play. Where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at uh, TJ for play official. That's TJ number four P L A Y official. I'm on TikTok as TJ for play, and then on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. Uh, my music is on TJ for play. So check that out. I got a ton of music I've been putting out this summer. I got about I think 20 songs that are out singles. I got an EP that came out last year. So definitely check that out. Feel free to DM me, man. I'm looking to work with anybody. So I'm trying to network, continue to grow in my craft. TJ for play. His name Good. is a joke. He's not. Is Amen. that what goes? That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, right, bro. Man, I appreciate you pulling appreciate up. Appreciate it, man. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Until next time. Thank you. Take yes, care. Sir. Yep. Yes, sir. Joining us live. Another member who performed in the Breakfast for Dinner yes, sir. live event. We are joined by Jay Steph. What it do, bro? What's up? What's up, bro? How you doing? How you feeling? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing good, man. Actually, I'm living life, man. I'm appreciating every moment. You know what I'm saying? I'm blessed. You feel me? You got to appreciate every moment. Good and bad, right? Of course. Of course. You got to, of course, endure your, you know, your L sometimes that you take in life. You feel me? Um, it comes with life, so you just got to deal with it. And then, you know, move accordingly, you know what I mean? And adjust to it, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And keep going, you know what I mean? So that you avoid that, that um, you know, that event or that, you know, adversity. You avoid it in the long run. Or you avoid it next time you come across it. Of course. That's what it's all about. That's what I'm, that's what I'm starting to learn. I mean, I've always known that. But right. it's just lately, you know, it's like the older you get, like the more catastrophic, you know what I'm saying, unfortunate shit. Yeah. is and you may think of it as that until you truly realize you know what it's a million other people that went through this mm -hmm. i'm it's not going to be the first time i come across this but right. next time i come across it, i'm gonna be well equipped for it right yeah. right hey right. we starting off with some good vibes off rip i of like course. it. i like course, it, man of course like i said the breakfast for dinner event um mm -hmm. the live performance how was that man man it was a it was a different experience man on a on a level that i've never you know felt before just a live band, you know, performing with instruments is just a different vibe in itself, mm. you know, rather than just the DJ playing it. Right. Of course, you know, that's simple on like every tour that you see, yeah. you know what I mean? But artists nowadays are bringing out a live band. So, you know, it brings a different vibe to it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you feel the music more. It hits mm. your soul a little more. Mm. You know what I mean? It's I soulful. Imagine. You feel me? So like being on that stage and performing, you know, the type of song that I perform, uh, it's a song I wrote called Can You Fly? It's probably going to come out soon. Um, it was just, you know, a message for myself. It starts with me. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I create is for myself. It's coming from myself. Mm. So at that time, what I was dealing with, you know what I'm saying, when my parents, you know, split and everything, this happened before, you know, I went over to college. So, you know, I was really in, you know, that, a dark place right, yeah. at that time. So there was a lot of stuff going on. So I was just trying to figure out how can I do to let out this emotion. And, you know, I just remember those moments and writing that song and then, you know, I just kept my head up mm. and that's where I'm at right now. You feel me? Like, I feel like it's just a walking testimony at this point. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm just, you know, taking the steps that I'm seeing that God is, you know, playing his cards mm. and I'm just following suit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? That's all I can really do. You know what I mean? People be worried about what's the next step. I don't really worry about it too much because it's like, I know he got me. You know what I mean? So I'm not really, you know, hesitant or being stressed about it, man. I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, following the steps. So. When this opportunity came up, I'm like, yo, live band, you get an opportunity with, you know, a, a podcast, you know what I'm saying, like yourself right here. And it's just like, hey, it's nothing that can go wrong. You know what I mean? You got to take the opportunity. Yeah. So I see, you know, I saw fit. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go with it. Um, I love that you said the step, whatever step you take, God got you. Mm. Whenever I say my prayer, I end it with, thank you for being with me on my step, the right step, good or bad. Of course. Kind of back to what we said. Because bad being that you took the pain that you had from your parents splitting up and whatnot, that led you creating the song, which then brought the good out. Right. And I say that because you performed it. It was a hell of a performance. And Appreciate you're not the that. you're not the first or last person that's going through that situation. Right. That'll be able to feel it through your music. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you're able to push out what you're feeling through your music. And it's a thousand 
to tens of thousands, to hundreds of thousands, to millions of people who feel the exact same shit. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of music. So it sounds like in a way you creating your music for yourself is therapeutic. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like it's like my therapy in a way. You know what I mean? Like, um, I just think about it as like uh, I was at a confusing time when I was going to Bowie University. Um, I didn't know what the purpose was. You feel mm -hmm. me? So I'm just at a point in time. Where I'm like, I'm not doing no sports. I just dropped out. Mm -hmm. What the hell am I about to do right now? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got to work. I got to do something to make something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So and then one day I, I, I rolled up a J went outside, you know, I used to, you know, be sitting in my uh, garage because this is back when, you know, COVID didn't hit and mm -hmm. shit like that. So my dad was at work. So I would be home yeah. just chilling. So I was sitting in the garage. Dude comes, walks up to me, you know what I'm saying? Like he's selling something like um, pesticide to kill insects. And then he's like, we chatted up for a little bit. Keep in mind, I didn't, you know, say nothing about my music or anything like that of the right. matter. And then we ended the conversation and he was getting ready to walk away. And he said, Oh yeah, bro, follow your dreams. Mm. And it hit me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I was sitting there stuck and I'm like, damn, like I, there, there's my answer right there. So it's yeah. just like, all right, I'm gonna I'm pick my stew up. You know, I'm gonna pick yeah. my mic back up. And I'm gonna lock, I'm gonna lock it in. You know what I'm saying? Yo, <clears throat> Jay, it's crazy. It's always the most random times where you hear something like that mm -hmm. that inspires you to keep going. And it always comes at a time where you're close to quitting. Exactly. Always. Exactly. exactly. With this podcast, I mean, this shit is, people think podcast is just you pick up a mic, you record, and boom, you put it out and it does numbers. Right. This shit is fucking tough. Yeah. And it's been so many times where I wanted to quit. And literally every single time where I've considered quitting, there's been someone who I completely did not expect to do so, yeah. reached out to me in some way and said, yo, you're doing your shit, keep going. I'd mm. be like, damn, you following this? Yeah. Yeah. You, you saying that at this time where I'm about to stop? Yeah. I got no choice, but that's God speaking through you. you I have no me? choice but to keep it going. You feel me? That's exactly what happened with dude with you when he said follow your dream. He had no idea that you was any type of creator of any sort. Yeah. But he said that shit. Right. Because he was in a situation where he could have followed his dreams, but he didn't. So he didn't want you to go down the same path. I guarantee that's what it was. Exactly. And that's yes. how I kind of kind of look at life at it. It's just like, all right, boom, cool. I got my answer. You know what I'm saying? This is what he want me to do. So like, all right, I'm going to do it, man. But I got to take the necessary steps in order to get it. I got to get a job. I got to get a well-paying job in order to fund Yo, so I can do stuff like this. You feel nigga. me? <laughs> you feel me? I, st bro, I started with a fucking iPhone. <laughs> hey. No computer or none of this shit. This mm -hmm. shit, it, it, it does cause bread to follow your dreams, but I don't, right. it, it's an investment. It's an investment. It's an investment yourself. to so follow it's your like, dreams. You can't, think of, you can't think of it as a burden. Nah. You know what I mean? You can't nah. think of it as a burden. You got to, you know, I'm, I'm investing in myself like this. 350, I right, boom. Mm -hmm. I throw that with mm -hmm. no hesitation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You get this, a performance with a live band, can't go wrong, man. You yeah. you got to take an opportunity like that because it's like, now I'm going to take this footage and the performance footage, post it on my platform, and it may reach out to somebody else in another yeah. country. You never, you know what I'm saying? You never know, man. Never know. You never know your impact. That's why yeah. I always say to myself, you know, keep going. Don't stop. Just keep going, keep yeah. going, keep going, man. Like, you can't stop, man. Can't. Word, you can't. So you perform in that song, which is a heavy song to perform, right? Mm -hmm. You performed it. Did you feel that emotional connection from not only just the audience, but from the band members, everyone that was involved? Did you feel that that emotional and spiritual connection when you was performing? Yeah, it was kind of like it was circulating. So, mm. like, feeling the room out. Uh, as you can see through the whole performance, I was kind of like, I closed my eyes for most of the performance. You know what I'm saying? So like, That's deep. when I'm doing that, like I'm really in tune with what's going on. I'm feeling the music. I'm feeling the drums hit my heart. I'm feeling the the, the strings mm. go through up my feet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? In my, in, in my legs, I'm yeah. feeling everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like at that point, I'm letting the song just carry. Well, I'm letting the emotion from that time just carry and take it over. And just, it's like I'm going back in time to tell this story in order for you to feel me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, uh, my boy Dom, he lives out in Atlanta. He's kind of like my manager type thing. So mm -hmm. it's like, he's always telling me, you got to feel that shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You got to feel it when you make the music. If you're not feeling it in the booth, how the hell they going to feel it? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, I got to I gotta stay in tune. You know what I'm saying? These songs that I write are sometimes spiritual because I'm also a spiritual, you know, I'm a spiritual guy, you know what I'm saying? I believe in a high power, you know what I'm saying? I believe in Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying? I stay locked in, get a scripture every day, stay locked in, man. So 
I got to be, I got to, I got to tell my testimony. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it as I'm, I'm a walking testimony. And that's why he told me to pick up this mic because I got a voice. My, my, my grandfather, who's uh, in Trinidad right now, he's still living down there with my grandmother and shit. Um, he's a pastor. So it's like my mom told me, she was like, you know, you, you, you just like your grandfather, but you mm. preach in a different way. So I'm like, damn, and their last name is Yule. So she was like, it just must be a Yule thing. You mm. got that Yule blood in you, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I take pride in being Trinidadian, man. I, I love it to death, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? That, that's my country, that's my home. You know what I mean? And I would love to go back soon. I got to get, you know, renew on my, uh, you know, my passport and mm -hmm. shit. But we're going to get locked in on that for, for sure. sure. Being compared to your grandfather is a hell of a compliment, I would say. Because mm -hmm. grandfathers are some of the most wisdom. I said wisdom. Some of the most wise people we know. Of course. Right. And they have so much, so much. Ah oh, man, just so much life within that body, mm -hmm. right? So be being compared to that is good, man. Of so course. what 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 keeps you, what keeps you in such a high driven energy passion to this day to keep making music how you do mm -hmm. the music that you do make? What drives that? I feel like at this point, what drives me is knowing where I'm going to go because God showed me it. Mm. So it builds that excitement and that hunger and that drive to be like, nah, I can't stop. I know where I'm about to go. Yeah. I know where it's about to be at. I'm about to be in the stadiums. I'm about to be selling out arenas. Like, it's going to happen. He showed you it. It's mm. yours. You asked for it already. You know what I'm saying? It's mine already. I'm just at a different level doing it. Like, this podcast is going to take off. You know what I'm saying? Everything is going to take off. And then we're going to look back at this moment and be like, damn, I was at... I was at 4,000 followers during this time. I was at 1,000 followers during this time. And, and look where I'm at now. I'm verified, 600K. This podcast is like number one on Apple Music, Spotify. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, So it's like, it's already yours. It's here. You're in the moment. It's already here. That's what keeps me going and keeps mm -hmm. me driving. And also, it's like, I don't have to rush music anymore. Yeah. I can live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can live life. Let things happen in life. You know right. what I'm saying? Like. I just, I'm in a transitional period. I just got a crib in, in, in Virginia. Mm. I never thought, who, who would have thought, you right. know what I'm saying? Like That's big. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, I got bills, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, now when I step in the booth, I can talk about the worries and struggles of, I got to get at least 80 hours this week, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Just yeah. to keep that afloat and yeah. just to be on top of my funds, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So you just got to be smart with it, you know what I mean? And also pushing that bread into investing yourself. You just got to invest in yourself. Have you got to pay yourself. You yep. know what I mean? It's going to help you in the long run. And that's what a lot of artists is missing nowadays. You know what I mean? They're missing a lot of that nowadays. Yeah. I like that you said seeing where you're going to be manifesting it. You have to see the dream when nobody else does. Mm -hmm. Shout out to, uh, I forgot his name, the, the you know what I'm saying, the influent, the motivational speaker who spoke on the beginning of the Meek track. Right, right, And right. it's true because, I mean, that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. You have to be your biggest fan from day one. You have to see that shit when no one else sees it. And yep. then when it comes to full tuition, you knew what was going to happen. Like, that's why when people make it, they're not as surprised. They're like, I saw this. I, I've worked. You've yeah, worked. You yeah. put in the work. You yeah. literally done it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You took the L's, the dubs, mm -hmm. like. You was in the trenches, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You you did it. That's Absolutely. why it's gonna be so much more rewarding, and you're gonna you're gonna be humble. Yeah, you know what I mean. You're not gonna come off as arrogant. That's right. what you see a lot of the the fast growers, the fast yeah. artists that grow. They come off as arrogant or mm -hmm. you know big cocky headed. You right. know what I mean? So I I, I gotta love the grind. That's yeah. that's that's what my my boy Dom tells me every day. You say you gotta love the grind. You gotta love it. Yeah, you gotta love it. You got to. Mm -hmm. Hey man, and the grind is gonna treat you right in the long run. Because this whole conversation so far, hey, I, I've been getting goosebumps. I've been, mo I'm motivated. I'm crazy motivated <laughs> from you that, speaking man. right Appreciate now, bro. That, Seriously. Man. So what's 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 happening with you right now? What's to come? What's to come is um, I've been tapped in in tune with the uh, UK drill sound. Okay. So I'm coming out with a drill tape called Trini Boy, and um, we got some uh, features on there. My good boys, uh, shout out my young G's from Scotland. Uh, my boy SB and LK, man, uh, they some young, uh, they some young boys from Scotland, and uh, they make music out there, man. They they doing their thing out there. Um, they releasing music, you know what I'm saying? They got the accent and all. They got a heavy ass accent. 
You're, um, in, you're international. Yeah, yeah. You let know me what I mean? let me ask you something right quick because you mm -hmm. mentioned the drill music all the way in fucking Scotland. Mm -hmm. Let me <laughs> ask you something because when I saw this, I thought it was ridiculous that he said this. Charlemagne mm -hmm. the God said that Chief Keef is not one of the most influential rappers of of all time. And I want to get your take on it because you literally just mentioned drill taking place in Scotland. Yeah. And everybody know where drill, the foundation of drill, whether someone did it before him, the foundation of drill being right. on the world pronounced scale that it's on came from Chief Keef. Yeah. And I've always said that Chief Keef, I think the most influential rappers, because mm -hmm. if you're talking about establishments, then you can say 90s hip hop could be one or Atlanta one the, could be yeah. two. But if you're talking about individual rappers, I don't think anybody had an influence on the rap game heavier than Chief Keef ever. Yeah, like like his impact, shout out Chief Keef though, you know what I'm saying? But his impact, like he had like fucking white kids wearing the Gucci belts, mm -hmm. fucking pants to their knees. True religion. True religion. Jean jackets. Jean jackets, bro. Had the had... polo up, the polo color up. Bro, it, the niggas was in Canada wearing that shit. Like, yeah. come on now. Like, yeah. bro, I don't know. Niggas be tripping, bro. Yeah, that, that's that's what that be. Yeah. Like, niggas be tripping, bro. Yeah. Niggas be tripping, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> um, So where can people find you at? Uh, People can find me on Instagram. You can get me at JSBAP or uh, my main Instagram. You can get my gaming channel JS, I mean, not JS, J Steph Gaming. Um, both of those on Instagram. Twitter is J Steph MD with an underscore. Um, and my music, you can find me at J Steph on all platforms Spotify, uh, Apple Music, Amazon Music, all that. So you can find me on all there, J Steph, man. Just like that. Appreciate you, just appreciate you stopping by, bro. Already, bro. Hey, like appreciate I said, I'm, I've, I've been so inspired from this past 15 minutes of talking to you. Real shit, Amen. bro. Amen. Real Amen. shit. Thank you. Yeah. It's a blessing. It's been a blessing, bro. Absolutely. Until next time. Already. Now, we are joined by the one and only J Dub Doe. What it do, bro? What's good, my man? What's good, my man? All is good, but I do have a slight <laughs> conflict with you. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> We're doing the interview. It's great vibes. The hoodie. I like the colors, but the oh, W, yeah. the WSSU, let's talk about it. The illustrious. Does, does that, first off, shout out to Bowie State, A A A A Bowie. Hey, does that stand for Winston Salem State University? It stands for the oh my God. Winston Salem State University, my guy. You gotta you gotta correct yourself next time, man. You can't come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. My one and only, not my one and only, maybe my second shot of ever getting any type of ring in football was destroyed by Winston Salem <laughs> when I got to Bowie State. It hurt. <laughs> that did hurt. They 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 was they were some dogs back when I was there. They were some dogs. What years were you there? I got there 2014. I ain't even finished. I still gotta go back. 16 credits left. Fuck COVID for that. Mm -hmm. But Still so, got to go. Huh? So you was there for the back-to-back -back when y'all won two straight? Yes, I was. I was there the second time y'all... The first time, did y'all beat us in this? Yeah, y'all did. Y'all yeah, beat did. us twice. Yeah. Fucking yeah. A. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. So I transferred there. I was there the second time y'all beat us. <laughs> okay. And fuck, man. That shit. Oh. That, I, I, yeah, nah. Y'all had campus lit. And then I was a promoter on camp, bro. So then, of mm. course, the parties, bro. We made bread. Mm. I appreciate y'all for that. Like, y I appreciate y'all. <laughs> fuck <Yeah>. out of <laughs> here, Jay. Fuck out of here. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Um, but hey, I, I, hey, my Eagles got in that ass. So, you know what I'm saying? we The, the score is even. That was, yeah, yeah. The score is even, even though I still don't got a ring. So, not really. Um, <laughs> but J Dub, for short, um, another member of the Breakfast, Breakfast for Dinner Live performance. Yeah. Um, you have many videos on your IG from it. Mm -hmm. The aesthetic was gravy, the dark with the blue light and all mm -hmm. that. Let me just ask you, what was that experience and what was that feeling like of you being on the stage? Man, that uh that was great, bro. Honestly, like that whole, the whole aura, like just being within that, like that shit was phenomenal, man. I loved it. Loved every moment of it. I've performed with a band before and it was actually back at Winston. So to actually do it again and you know what I'm saying, do it like in the area in my city, mm -hmm. man, that shit was lovely, bro. And then doing it with this nigga, Mark, like, you know what I'm saying? The whole production, everything that he gave and offered, man, that shit was it was real loud, lovely. Like I fucked with it heavy. The live band. <laughs> I keep hearing about the live band. I keep hearing many compliments on the live band, just how oh, yeah. different that is. Yeah, they like that. As opposed to having like a DJ. <laughs> nah, that I, I prefer the band. Yeah. Like, honestly. For sure. Captain, what uh Captain Ahab and the Seaman, bro. Hey, Captain Ahab and the Seaman, I fuck with y'all heavy, bro. Mm. Y'all hit with it. Mm. Man, all of them dope, man. Yeah. Uh, 
jazz musicians, you know what I'm saying? So they able to catch a tune right then and there, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't really too much that they got to practice on well, mm-hmm. from, my, from my experience with yeah. them. And um, it's just, bro, just being with them, like they just a vibe, like, you know what I'm saying? They do, yeah. they're going to give it, they're going to bring what you want. Like, right. And I loved it. Love That's it. what's up. So comparing that live, to live performance, like you said, you performed at Winston, mm-hmm. for those who don't know, which is in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. So you performing in both cities, this being your hometown, and then in Winston-Salem, which is North Carolina, you know, it's a whole different vibe. What's the aesthetics like as, as hometown compared to Winston, North Carolina, where the music scene is slowly rising? You know what yeah. I'm saying? You have different elements and whatnot. Yeah. Like, what's the difference and uh, some similarities as far as here to there? Um, I say at Winston, at Winston, more so just, just like what I was doing there, like everything that I done did there for the school and just promo wise and just organizations that I was getting into, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like just all that shit, I would have to give it to Winston, but it just feels so good. It just feels so good. Like, you know what I'm saying? Being at home and hearing Mm -hmm. my people do it. Yeah. But it's like, I done rocked 1900 at Winston, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And the love that they give a nigga out there, that shit is crazy. Just mm. me being me being down South period and I'm from the city, man, they just fuck with it yeah. heavy. So yeah. out there, they show a lot of love. They give me, they they fuck with it heavy. That it's just, it's just a lot more. That Southern hospitality is it, it, so different. It's fucking real. It's, it's so different, but it I is love fucking it. Real. I love it every day, every day of the week. I love it. But more so. It's like it's just something different about when you, you know what I'm saying, when you home, yeah. when you when you with your people, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I hear people with the same accent I got. Yeah. It's like, man, that shit is lovely. Now and then with the shit that I'm dropping more so, like a lot of my numbers, before I'll be getting most of my numbers in Winston and in Charlotte and you know what I'm saying, Greensboro, mm-hmm. shit like that, because I was down there in North Carolina for right. so, for so long. Right. But then when I started bringing the grind back here and you know what I'm saying, my people seeing it, my family, my friends, all that. They see the grind. Yeah. And it's like now. Like I'm starting to see DC is like my top cities now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. yeah, it's I had to say, I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's yeah. it's really it, like hand in hand. It's a good compass and uh, uh contrast and comparison. And and but I just want to kind of shed light to that because I'm literally in the same uh same mode, if you would. I moved to Charlotte last year mm-hmm. and my intentions on moving to Charlotte was let me tap into the Charlotte. Uh, fan base. Let me mm. type into the Charlotte audience. And just as of last week, I looked and saw that my top, like, uh, you know, according to my insights uh, from podcasts and Instagram, where I put most of my content at, my top um, audience, if you would, is Charlotte. It's mm-hmm. Charlotte, Baltimore, DC, PG, Maryland, and whatnot. But you need that to kind of expand, right? Yeah. You was in Winston, right? So you yeah. was performing out there. It was different for them. Mm-hmm. But they took that and gave it to someone else. They gave it to someone from Charlotte. They gave mm-hmm. it to someone from Greensboro so that you could tap into the different spots. Mm-hmm. I just want to shed light because it's so important for artists or any type of creators or anyone who has anything going on to realize that you have to expand. Mm-hmm. You can be the shit where you at, but you got to be... Take it to the fucking next yeah, city. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. You gotta every take it to day, the next spot. I always say this shit all the time, bro. Every day is another day to get it right, bro. And then my cousin been drilling this shit in me for the longest, bro. Mm. World domination one day at a time, my boy. Mm. And it's like, even what you said, even with expanding all that shit, just because I done did it here, you know what I'm saying? Don't mean I can't do it here too. Don't right. mean I can't do it here too. Don't right. mean I can't go out in motherfucking Cali and, and rock that shit out mm-hmm. there. You know what I'm saying? It don't mean that. And I'm going to do it. It just more so I just got that within myself. Like I know what I could do within myself and the same confidence. And I even got on one song. I even say I might be conceited. Like the same arrogance, all that, like that I had when I was at Winston and that I had before I left here. It's like I'm also just capitalizing on that now or it's, everything is just so enhanced now. Yeah. It's like now I got to give it to everybody everywhere yeah. I go. It's like yeah. I got to make a new fan. I got to I gotta do something. Something mm-hmm. got to happen. They got to know I do some fucking music. You know got to. Saying? Got to. Absolutely have to. Um, so shit, like let's, let's take it back some. Mm-hmm. Where did this come from? What even got you to the point where you're at now? What made you even realize this is what you were destined for? Man, fucking. I started, I started writing. I was bad as shit as a kid, bro. Bad and you know what's shit. crazy? I'm gonna let you continue, but you know what's crazy? It's always creators that start out with the, man, when I was young, I was a fucking headache. <laughs> I didn't real. listen to directions. For I was real, all though. over the place. It's always those that lead to somebody that's doing some shit creatively. Yeah. 
You have to be, right? Because you're not scared. You're not scared to push the boundaries. At all. At all. (laughs) I'm a bold motherfucker. (laughs) Hey, you have to be, man. Look, man, I started, I started writing when I was like nine years old. Uh, and then more so it it wasn't even music. It was more so just me trying to vent my feelings and shit. And Mm. the more and more I got in trouble and I'd be on punishment and shit, the more and more I try to just try new shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm now. Now I'm just writing at this point. I'm mad, but I'm mad at myself for doing some dumb shit, but I don't mm. really realize it. I'm a kid. Kids don't yeah. realize it. You know right. what I'm saying? But it's more so like, all right, now I'm about to try to rhyme this shit. Now let me try to let me try to do a poem. Let me try to really vent and, you know, make something that's really creative here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I was still like scared as shit until I met my cousin and my uncle when I was 13. I was 13 or 14. Met my cousin and my uncle. This is the MySpace days, bro. They was back on MySpace. They had their own picture up there, their music up there. So when I met these niggas, I'm like, bro, I got some motherfucking celebrities in my family, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, they from the city and they're like, yeah. nigga, like, I'm about to go up. So now my little sister, she said something to them like, y'all know, y'all know J-Rap? And they're they like, oh, man, scared as shit. Like, man, sweating. But I rap. And where, they told where was me, you at, like an event or something? When you, nah, we was in the goddamn oh, house. In front of them? Yeah, you like I rapped in front of them. Of them. Like okay. we was in the house. I was in the living room, like, and then um, did that shit with them. And then after I did that shit with them, bro, they told me I was better than some of the niggas that they knew already. Mm. And like that was their age. Once yeah. they told me that, that shit gave me the confidence. They started giving me like little beats on the CDs and shit. I beat, man, had the little CD player, motherfucker spinning that shit. Just they gave writing, you homework. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I just took that and I ran with it. Like, mm. took that and ran with it. Wasn't playing no games. I like it. <clears throat> and then I did the shit in high school. Did the shit in high school in like 10th grade. Wrapped that shit there. Ended up winning Homecoming King off me rapping. Mm. Uh, every talent show I did, I won. Took that. We had a, it was a scholarship opportunity. We did that with a whole bunch of other schools. Did the same shit there. After that, it's like, you can't tell me shit. I'm about to go to Winston and shut shit down. Yeah. Like, that's so how you, I was looking at it. You you saw it. You had yeah. the plan drawn out. Yeah. You knew you was going to a school outside of the area mm-hmm. in North Carolina, and you knew you was going to go there and tap into that fan base. Yes, sir. That's mm-hmm. what it takes. You have to see it before anybody else, full tuition. Yes, sir. Um, so in high school, you said you won all the talent shows and whatnot. Were you the... Were you like uh, rapping at lunch, like in the cafeteria and whatnot? <laughs> yeah, bro. We yeah. uh, we have we have like little rap battles and shit. Of course, we did those jumps. Like I, I most so do it, but it was like they had to real life bring me out. It's like you got to okay. real life come with some shit oh, in order for okay. me. <laughs> okay, and that was crazy, bro. I remember one time. It was the last time. The last time I did one. After this, bro, I, and I ripped it. I don't, I forgot what I said, but I was kind of like rapping the alphabet, mm. and I was like. I said A B C and it was something. Oh, you did that. You did that Papu shit. Bro, that nigga, <laughs> the shit <laughs> went crazy, bro. Whole cafeteria went crazy. Dean of student security coming out there. They thinking it's a motherfucking fight, fight. and shit. Yeah, I'm like, bro, I just ripped cause I ain't even yeah. about to do this shit right. anymore. I don't need right. battle rap, bro. I'm done with it. And that <laughs> says a lot because you know, in high school, you feel when a fight is happening because the energy is just channeled towards Bruh. one thing and you feel it. Yeah. So that's happened to that's happening towards you. Ripping some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked if you was doing the cafeteria lunchtime shit because, again, going back to what I said before, how all creatives and all greats kind of start off as badass kids. Mm-hmm. All great rappers, when they're in some type of interview, they always say how they used to cook shit at lunchtime in the cafeteria. <laughs> all of them. Right. All yeah, of them. I mean, right. that's how that's how you establish that first, that first, that battle moment, right? Because you, that's when you first get, because you know in high school, they're not letting back. Because oh, if yeah. you some shit, where did you go to high school at? I went to Friendship Collegiate. Okay, in, in the city. Yeah. Okay, boom, that's even worse. <laughs> so you know in the city, if you want some bullshit, they're going to let you hear it. Oh, bro. oh yeah, bro. Oh, Come yeah, bro. on now. And then here's the whole kill. Like back then, how I'm rapping now, I ain't even sound like this at all. I was mm. more so on some conscious shit. Like my favorite rapper, like, well, nah, he still is one of my top rappers. But back then, my favorite rapper was Eminem. So it's like more so it's like I'm on some shit. I'm trying to be lyrical. I don't understand the M bash <laughs> nowadays. I'm like, so glad you said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't I'm, understand it. Cause lyrically he's literally oh, yeah, one of like the I'm, greatest I'm a, of all. I'm gonna applaud time. him all the time. Every yes. day of the week. <laughs> Every day of the week. M was there. M was doing that shit. Broke a rubber, busted a nut up in your mother. So tell me how you feel about having a little brother. Nasty. Right. But I'm, I mean, I, that's just some, that's just some goofy shit, but still, like I just Real don't understand the 
again, and that comes from the younger crowd that is only hype off the, I need some shit that the beat is going to make me want to dance to, mm -hmm. and the words is going to make me want to turn up and drink or pop some drugs to. Mm -hmm. Nah, nigga, we come from an era where them um, lyrics spoke that shit. Yeah, and it's like, really, I'm on some shit now. I'm looking at the camera now. I'm on some shit now. Everything I do, you know what I'm saying? It got to be authentic. It got to have some substance mm -hmm. in it. It got to stick out and be... It got a real life, like, be distinctive from every other motherfucker that's around me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody. It got to it yeah. gotta set apart. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just got to have that all the time. And I'm hard on myself about that. Like, even... I, I can't let myself be inadequate at all. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just trying to always better myself, perfect it. Like, just... If it sound like somebody else, I delete the whole shit, rest mm -hmm. out all the way over. I like, like it. Real life. So what got... So you said you started out kind of more so on the conscious... Um, tip if you would. So what got you, what led to that, uh, what led to you evolving to how you said it changed? What led to that? Going to Winston. Ah. Going, going to Winston. Going, just Stepping outside your element. Real life. Just being in the South, bro. Yeah. Being in the South. Like even, yeah. you know, so you know the music here, you know the music here in the city and in the DMV, it wasn't always the same like some years ago. It wasn't all, it wouldn't really be the same as what it was in the South. You right. know what I'm saying? You yeah. had, you had thug, like you just just a crank in the beats. And you was there when Atlanta been taking over for a minute, but you was there when the South was like really influential. I was, I was there when like like K Kemp was K Kemp. Ooh. Like I, I was at I was at Winston. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, like how I'm looking at it, how I'm hearing everything. We, I'm talking about like my fucking rich homie and, mm, and like back and thug, which yeah, rich, rich like gang. We, yeah, we talking about that. Like, oh bro. man! And after hearing that shit for so long, and oh, then man. with me being a promoter, I was a promoter out there. So like, I'm in the parties. I'm hearing, you know, what I'm saying the same mixes. Like some of the all all our DJs wasn't good, mm. but the ones who were good and, mm. and the ones who like that now, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying like I we of course we know the mix, like yeah. not know the mix, but. We know what's coming next yeah. just because we can read the room. We, right. we understand the crowd. We know yeah. what type of crowd we're working with. Yeah. And it was more so just hearing that shit all the time, bro. Just mm. hearing the music and more so me being down there and actually understanding, like, bro, everything crank. Like, I mm. just got to crank. I yeah. love cranking. Like, yeah. I like dancing too. Like, yeah. I, I went, me and my man went viral at Winston for doing a, uh, for doing a fucking dance down there. Mm -hmm. Shit went viral. Chancellor called us out of class and all this type of wild <laughs> shit, bro. Like, crazy yeah. as shit. Hey. But- it was just like shit was just cranking so much. And that was that was where I learned the shit from. I knew I had to turn this shit around uh after I got out there because I did I did a, a show out there. I did a um it was a battleground out there. They tried to I was just rapping. I'm giving their ass straight bars. Mm -hmm. Like they fucking with me, but it's not cranking. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they I'm seeing how they responded to me, but I'm also seeing how they responded to these other motherfuckers and they shit crank. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna even knock it. Yeah. And it's like more so, it's like, all right, cool. I just need to make a little switch here. Like yeah. I can still do the dan the same shit. Like yeah. it, everything can be done. I can still do what I'm doing, but I now want to do this shit over a trap beat. Now I want to do this shit over a beat that's cranking some more, over a little Uzi type of beat. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. It's important that, you, it, yo, that's, that's important because people want to kind of stay stagnant in a place of where they think is the best. Mm -hmm. Maybe because, because from back home, maybe say back home, you know that's top notch. Mm -hmm. But you go out there, you're like, okay, it's, they're used to a certain level of crank that I'm not tapping into. Yeah. Let me make this slight adjustment to reach yeah. it, right? And Adapting, adapting to adapting. my environment. Yeah. Adapting to my environment, yeah. bro. And that was what I had to learn. Like with me being out there in that area, this shit is not home. Like this mm -hmm. shit is not home. They way more aggressive where I'm at. Just like mm -hmm. we was talking about the Southern hospitality. Yeah. This shit is not home at all. Yeah. So. Just me, even my mannerisms on how I'm even looking at everything, period. I'm just like, bruh, I need to really like, you know, get out of that DC mindset. Mm. Like, I really got to put myself into show how show how my artistry, let, so, let my artistry speak for itself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Let me show what I can do. Let me, let me, you know what I'm saying? Let y'all niggas know, like, bruh, I'm not the one that's just going to give you some bars. Like, nah, this motherfucker song going to crank too. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have your ass bobbing your head, tapping your feet, getting about your seat, all that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was more so I had to learn it from being down there, really hearing beats and me studying beats. Like, bruh, I motherfucker listen to a beat all day. I listen to beats on it going anywhere mm -hmm. rather than listen to music. I ain't Word. even got too much music in my phone. Mm, so you just need the beats to really That's tap it. into that shit. That's it. I get the beat. I feel it. Man, it's it's over from there. <laughs> I like it, man. <laughs> I like it, Jay. I really do. Um, shit, man. What, 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 what do you have now 
out for the people to tap into and where can they tap into to tap into it? Back and Better 2. Back and Better 2, every platform, all streaming platforms. I'm back. I told I told niggas before, I'm back and I'm way motherfucking better than I was before. Mm. So Back and Better 2, that's out. It was just an EP, but I got my project coming soon. I got my project coming soon. Time is ticking. The time is ticking for a lot of shit. The year's about to be over with. I got a baby on the way. It's a lot of shit that's ticking, bro. So mm. I got to get shit going now. Time is ticking. Supposed to be coming out real soon. Early October. I had to push the shit back, but it was more so just me pushing it back just so I can make sure I go about everything the right way. You yeah. know what I'm saying? This go around. Making sure that I'm not fucking up at any, you know what I'm saying? At any point of this, this journey that I'm going on for yeah. making this project the project that I put my most into period. Absolutely. So on, on Back and Better 2, what's your personally, what's your favorite track off of Back and Better 2? My favorite track off there is Substance. Why so? It's different than every other song on there. It's How different. So? Uh it gives a it gives a jazz, it gives a jazz and spoken word and really a song with some substance. It mm. gives that vibe. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like it's me being, it's me being more so free and 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 raw. Mm. And you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I'm not really giving a fuck at this point. Yeah. Like, and I realized that at that point, like me making, me making that whole EP for real, for real. Mm-hmm. that whole little, you know what I'm saying, project for myself. It's like once I notice, once I notice that, like, bro, I could really, I could really do this shit, like, bro. Yeah. And I never really gave a fuck before, but it's like the fact that I'm not talking about it. It's like, nah, I really need to set that shit in stone. Let mm-hmm. niggas know I'm here, and I don't give a fuck about any of y'all. Like, this is, I look at this shit like it's a sport, bro. This shit competition. The yeah. way that Kendrick did niggas with that control verse, that's mm. that's my mentality right Shook now. The game. That's how. That's yeah. that's my mentality right now. I like it. And I feel like with substance, I'm giving some shit. I got. I got crank on there. I like my song authentic. Yeah. The song is authentic. Like, like that shit is me talking about me being in my own lane. I got payday. That shit is yeah. just yeah. what it is. Substance, that shit is different. It yeah. don't even it got a fucking it got a fucking saxophone in that jump. Like, man, it's different, bro. It's always whenever you ask an artist of their favorite track off of an album, it's always the one that's not the biggest banger per se, if you it's will. It's not because it's the one that they <laughs> tap into the hardest where you feel where you feel their soul in it. Yeah. It's always that one. That's, that's really what I like it is, ask. bro. I gave my all in. Well, at the time, I gave my all into substance. Everything I had, everything I had at that time, I gave it all into that. And I just more so on my mind at the time was just me. I I live for performing. I mm-hmm. love the stage. Yeah. So on my mind, I'm just like, bro, I cannot fucking wait to perform this job, mm. bro. And every time I perform it, man, it's love. You every feel that time. you feel that energy when I you feel perform it. it. But my biggest song off that jump, I think it's probably payday. Everybody fuck with payday heavy. Yeah. Payday heavy. I'm saying, do you feel that energy as far as people connecting to you on a spiritual level when you perform that joint? When I perform that, yeah. Yeah. When I perform that, and just more so, I ain't even gonna even say when I perform that, just how I'm performing now, period. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like just, yeah, I feel like motherfuckers are actually hearing me now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like the crowd is hearing me. I'm gaining a new fan. Just, I'm doing what I want to do. I, I'm gaining a new fan every day in mm-hmm. any performance. I'm I'm getting followers, like listeners, more streams. I see every I see my numbers going up and everything yeah. that I perform. So it just tells me that, you know, I'm doing the right thing and that. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the right road. Just just like I said, every day, another day to get it right. I just got to keep going on. Keep going. Yes, sir. Keep going in. And listen, y'all, time is fucking ticking. The time is fucking <laughs> ticking, y'all. The time is fucking ticking, my nigga. I can't wait for this shit to drop, man. I can't wait. And the, the listeners and followers can't wait. Where man. can they find you at and follow you so that they can be kept up to date on everything that's to come, including yes, time sir. is ticking? Uh, you want to find me on all streaming platforms. That's J Dub Do J Dash D U B D O E E two E's in a Do. All social media platforms. It's the same shit. That's I M J underscore Dub I M J underscore D U B. And you can find me on there, bro. Fuck with me. I always take feedback. I'm always here for the love. I, I reciprocate energy all the time. So yeah, y'all fuck with me, man. I'm a hey, <laughs> time is ticking. I'm in a whole different mood. Mentality is different. I, I always got told when you about to become a father that your that your whole mental gonna change. Mm-hmm. And it's like I real I, I felt that shit when I got the news, boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. You bro, said it was ready. grind time. 
Grind hey, time. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the future endeavors. Yes, I'm looking forward to the time is ticking. Yes, sir. Keep going, man. Yes, For sir. Real. Every day of the week. Absolutely. Every world day of the week. world domination one day at a time. One day at a time. That hey, is a fucking caption for your ass. Shout out to Prince Kaching for that. My motherfucking cousin. Love you dearly, bro. World domination one time. I mean, one day at a time, bro. And you can only do this shit. You can only take this shit one day at a time. I like it. Day by day. Day by day. <laughs> On day by day. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Yes, Make sure y'all tap in.